Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. I've been pretty clear about the fact that desktop Linux has disappointed me. It turns out that it's a lot more fickle and unstable than what I need to get work done. Uh, so I made a video about that, essentially saying that I'm giving up on desktop Linux. But I saw a few comments that got me thinking. They said, well why don't you just use Debian? And I was like, yeah, I haven't really given Debian a fair shot. And so this month, I'm going to use Debian for everything I can possibly use it for. Sorry, bumped the mic. And uh, we're going to put it through its paces and see if it's really the stable desktop of choice. So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. So Debian is known for being stable, and my issue with all the Linux distros I had tried is that all of them ended up being unstable in one way or another. So why don't I use the most stable desktop operating system there allegedly is? Let's talk about my initial experience. Installing Debian was quite straightforward. Uh, last time I had installed it, it had this awful text UI that you had to navigate through and it was a really bad installation experience. But since then, that has changed. They now have a GUI Calamares installer, which works a treat, and I was able to set up everything I needed to use. Um, I didn't see an option for full disk encryption. I probably just missed it, but I use Veracrypt to make encrypted containers on my desktop instead of encrypting the whole disk, mostly because of the performance penalty. But, we'll talk more about that later, maybe another time. Something that I liked about the installation of Debian is that it worked on the first try, which I know sounds like a ridiculous bar to have, but after installation issues with Ubuntu and even on Fedora, much less Cubes OS, it was refreshing to have something that just immediately took to the hardware and got up and running. In fact, I had everything set up and installed in no more than an hour. And that brings me to package management. I like the Debian approach to package management. You just have apt. Apt is all you need. And I have installed Flatpak alongside it. Here's my reasoning. So I want to avoid adding any third-party repositories to my Debian system. Because in my experience, when you add a third-party repository, that's when things really start to get unstable. So we're going to forego all of that, and if I can't get an application as a .deb file, then I'm going... Rather, if I can't get an application in the official Debian repos, then I'm going to search Flathub and look for a reputable Flatpak version, rather than adding uh, another repo to my system. It's just safer that way in both cybersecurity sense and instability. Like I said, it was like an hour of work and I had everything up and running. It was great, you know, it was so much faster than Windows. You see, before I installed Debian, I actually installed Windows 11 on my ThinkPad, and my reasoning was, okay, if I can't get Linux to work for me, I'm gonna have to use Windows on this. And it took an hour and a half for it to just install Windows, and then it took another hour to run updates, and then the setup process took another 30 minutes, then installing my applications took another hour, I had to Google for the applications like a barbarian. Uh, the whole thing just... Ugh, it was so gross and frustrating, and the dark patterns Microsoft employs, and it's like, I just can't use this. And so, I have my Mac, obviously, I have my iPad, but I want an x86 laptop that I can carry around with me because, let's be honest, a lot of stuff still requires x86. Something really nice about packages in Debian Stable is that they don't really change at all. Like, you get that version of the application, it's the long-term support version usually, and it gets backported security updates, so this is actually a win-win for my use case. Because, here's my reasoning, if you update your packages to the latest versions at all times, then essentially you're introducing new security bugs that haven't been discovered yet. But if you use an old version of a package and you get backported security updates, then you're getting all the fixes for that version of the software without opening up any new avenues. So from a security perspective, this is actually superior to living on the bleeding edge. 
uh, and also in terms of stability, but stability plays into security. They're not totally separate things. In cybersecurity, we often talk about the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And having something be stable increases the availability of it, meaning that you have increased your overall security. These things don't exist in a bubble. They're all intertwined and interconnected. Each thing you choose influences another. It's really a metaphor for the way life is approached. But my whole point is that this gives you a really secure system. And a really stable one, too. So for the last week or so, I've been using Debian, and I installed all my applications. I've got VS Code. Ugh, I know, I know. But I installed the Vim extension in VS Code to make it behave like Vim, so I get the best of both worlds. Anyway, that all works flawless. I've got Firefox, I've got Git. I've got all the tools that I need to manage my lab here at home and do cloud resource management as well. You know, even PowerShell works. PowerShell is one that I made an exception for. I did add a new repo for PowerShell on Debian, and that's because I think Microsoft has enough skin in the game to be held responsible if something goes wrong, but also because it's, it's just nice. All of my workflows work perfectly fine, just like they have on any Linux distribution. Yeah, the packages are a little bit older, but do I notice? No, not really. I mean, all of this has taught me something about myself. The problem was never Linux. The problem was always me. Uh, so, Debian has taught me that I would prefer to have a stable, predictable, measurable experience with technology rather than chasing the hottest new trend. I value stability and usability over shiny new at this point in my life. After all, I'm over 30. It kind of makes sense. So rather than chasing after the latest trends and the, the most in vogue tiling window managers and stuff, I'm just going to stick to Debian with GNOME for now. And uh, I'm just going to enjoy that and enjoy using it and enjoy not having Microsoft spy on me. It's funny how something is benign as a Linux distribution can actually teach you something pretty important about yourself. And so if you're curious into jumping into the deep end with Linux, I've got some videos that'll help you get started. Especially, I especially recommend the one about your first terminal commands. Believe it or not, whatever you think people say, you do need to know how to use the terminal to some degree in order to use Linux proficiently. So I'd recommend you check out that video. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. I'm going to make this a series, uh, probably one video a week over the next month, and it'll kind of take you along with me on this journey into Debian, and uh, maybe we'll both learn something along the way. Uh, it, so one thing I do have to ask of you, there's this button on the screen right now. It looks like this, this kind of symbol. Nobody knows what it does. Nobody. We think we know, but we don't. The only way we can figure out what that button does is if we click it, that button. So if you click that button, comment down below and tell me what it does. You know, it's a mystery and I feel like we need to solve it. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Patrick, I'm your cybersecurity engineer, and I'll catch you in the next one. I don't know why I saluted. I don't, I never salute. Uh...